so scrapping can account for a large portion of the existing supply side if markets are bad enough now if you look at the next good year of scrapping that was 2009 you will see that roughly 12 million tons of deadweight uh, deadweight tons of ships were scrapped but if you look at the average age you could see that the average age was closer to 30 years for scrapping so there's a significant difference between the quality of the ships or the age of the ships being scrapped in 2009 as compared to the age of ships being scrapped in 1986. So there is much more scope for scrapping this time than there was in the previous uh, very bad cycle which was in 1986. This gives you uh, a quarter by quarter account of the ships being scrapped. Uh, here I've got it for you in number of ships scrapped and the red line uh, represents the percentage of the number of ships in the form of the small handy size sector that was scrapped. So you can see that small handy size sectors uh, scrapping is very much larger than in any other uh, sector of the dry bulk market. The same thing looked at in terms of deadweight tons. And here you can see as I was telling you in the first half of this year almost 14 million deadweight tons of ships have been scrapped. Can we continue scrapping at this pace? And that is the big question mark because our ships, uh, our scrap yards capable of absorbing more than this volume of tonnage. And that's the uh, uh, real big question that will be answered as we go along because we're already in uncharted waters. Coming to slippage. If you look at the slippage in deadweight ton terms in 2008 there was 23 percent of slippage in 2009 that jumped up to 41 percent in 2010 it dropped to 38 percent and if we were to annualize the first half numbers of 2011 you'll see you'll see that slippage has fallen to 37 percent now this is despite the fact that the first half of this year the BDI has been at the lowest possible level that we have seen for a six month period as compared to any six month period going all the way back to 2002. So the market has been the worst but slippage has not been so strong and this is because shipyards are able to deliver ships to their clients uh, in a much quicker manner now and are able to uh, get deliveries done despite the stress that is there in the shipping markets. This is again uh, a view to show you how tonnage has been changing. So if you were to look at the end 2000 year number, we had about 295 million deadweight tons of ships with us and if you look at the mid 2011 number, you see that we're almost at the 600 million deadweight ton mark. So we're almost double in the space of 10 years time. So the growth has been phenomenal in terms of supply. The only hopes that we have are scrapping and slippage. And as I said, slippage is not working as well as we would have wanted it to work. So scrapping has to take up the slack. And there again, we have a question mark in terms of the capacity for scrapping available in the world shipyards. In terms of the fundamental demand drivers, nothing has really changed. The world population is still growing. More wealth is being accumulated by many more individuals. Eating habits have changed. There is now a greater propensity for non-vegetarian diets which are extremely grain intensive in terms of production. Urbanization is growing. Infrastructure development in the developing world in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries as well as in India are progressing quite strongly. Infrastructure in the developed world is old and dilapidated and needs to be refurbished. There was a very large concerted stimulus plan. Most of it has now wound down, but there is now talk about a QE3 uh, taking place in America. 
So if we were to look at the supply-demand balance situation, we would conclude as follows that China's appetite for raw materials is not going to slow down anytime soon. India's plans for its urbanization and infrastructure development is going ahead in a big way. The Middle East countries themselves are strongly urbanizing and increasing the infrastructure. So therefore, iron ore, coal and steel will continue to be the dominant figures in the commodity cycle. The supply side of shifts looks quite strong, especially in the Cape size sector. Hopefully the financial crisis that is there in the world will slow down some of the deliveries. The other hope is that some of the yards that were new, brand new and started out their lives during the boom years will possibly close down. We've already seen a lot of that happening in South Korea. We've seen a couple of yards in China closing down and we've seen a couple of yards in Japan having the same problems. The biggest factor or the strongest factor that is there to help the supply side is the existing age profile of the world fleet. Over the last few years, scrapping has been very minimal at best. And when it has taken place, it has taken place on ships that were of an average age of 30 years or more. Therefore, there is a lot of capacity for scrapping available within the existing supply side. And if that takes place, we should have a balance between supply and demand maybe as early as 2013. So what is the strategy that pressure shipping has adopted considering this macro picture of demand and supply? Firstly, we have novated three shipbuilding contracts and gained approximately 10 million US dollars from this sale. Secondly, we've sold 35 ships over the last few years and made a capital gains of approximately 80 million dollars and keep in mind these ships were approximately 27 years of age when we sold them. We purchased two replacement ships each of them valued at approximately 23 million dollars and then we stopped because prices started to go back up again and we thought that it was too expensive to continue the purchase program. Having sold the three new building contracts, we purchased four for roughly the same price but a much larger size from a distressed sale in China. We still have another 1920 ships to be purchased from the second hand market. Cash available in the balance sheet at the end of Q2 was approximately 150 million dollars and we have two credit facilities each of 200 million dollars, one available till the end of this year, the other available till the end of June next year for buying second-hand ships. We signed three contracts for cement ships and also chartered them out for 15, possibly 25 year long charters with the charter rate beginning at $15,000 a day fixed for the first 15 years. That itself should give us a payback period of close to less than six years, six, seven years for those ships. And of course, we're continuing to fix our ships on long-term contracts. However, with the current market being as low as it is, uh, we are avoiding doing this at this time. This is a slide to show you the BDI, which is the blue line, and then the five-year-old price which is the green line and the ten-year-old price which is the uh, sorry the five-year-old price which is the purple line and then the ten-year-old price which is the green line it shows you how prices of ships are almost one-to-one -one linked to the Baltic dry index as the index goes up prices of ships move up and as the index comes down the prices of ships comes uh, also come down you can see that there's been a sort of a disconnect towards the end of the slide where prices of ships have gone up once the market has come down but we are seeing now that correction taking place 
And for example, the two ships that we bought at $23 million each, 